This program contains graphic material, including offensive language. Viewer discretion is advised. Killed him for no reason. What do you do? I'm a dead man. Do you see a knife? Do you see anything that would have caused a threat to these motherfucking police officers? They shot that boy because they wanted to shoot that boy. Wait, hold on. What? Wait a minute. They just killed dude. In the middle of the motherfucking street. That's why I am. You killed me. Damn, man. Police shot him. Yeah, police did. Holy shit, they just killed this nigga. Outside my apartment, bro. He ain't armed. He don't got no gun. They just killed this nigga. His blood everywhere. his face and his chest and everything I watched the man go down like he just fucking just killed him period it wasn't no trying to protect himself or nothing he killed him In the meantime, we are staying on top of a developing story this morning a local 18 year old is shot and killed by police in Ferguson family members joined by protesters are demanding answers News 4's Brittany Noble is live at Ferguson Police Headquarters where officers have indicated they could release some more information later today. Brittany. Well, Deanna, last night the Ferguson Police Chief told me that he planned to hold a news conference today. Now it's unclear if that's going to happen since the chief is waiting for confirmation from St. Louis County Police. County Police are handling this investigation. Ferguson confirms they shot and killed a suspect. According to Mike Brown's mother, that suspect is her 18-year-old son. She said he was shot on Canfield Drive and left laying in the street for hours. Pictures all over social media. Brown is a 2014 graduate of Normandy High School and expected to start college in the fall. People are angry with police because they aren't releasing details of this case. And the chief says he hates to see this going on in his city. This was wrong and that was cold-hearted. That's the mother of Mike Brown. She says she wants answers, saying her son was walking to the store when the shooting happened. There was a near immediate backlash after the shooting, with protesters gathering and chanting, No justice, no peace. Brown's mother says her son recently graduated from high school, planned to start taking classes at Vatterat College on Monday. We understand police have cell phone videos from several witnesses that will be part of the investigation. The shooting happened in the middle of the afternoon and dozens of people say they saw it happen. News 4's Corey Stark has more from witnesses and relatives of the 18-year-old who was killed. We wasn't causing any harm to nobody. Uh, we had no weapons on us at all. Dorian Johnson says he was walking home from a convenience store with his friend Mike Brown. They were walking on the street when a Ferguson police officer from his vehicle told the boys to get out of the street. Johnson says they kept walking, causing the officer to confront the boys, first from his car, then got out of the car, firing a shot. Johnson says him and Brown were scared and ran away from the officer. He shot again, and once my friend felt that shot, he turned around and he put his hands in the air, and he started to get down, but the officer still approached with his weapon drawn, and he fired several more shots. No justice, no peace. Instantly, hundreds gathered, angered and saddened by what they call a complete overreaction by the officer. Now a family is demanding answers. You took my son away from me. You know how hard it was for me to get him to stay in school and graduate. You know how many black men graduate.
that's the way. Not many. Because you bring them down to this type of level where they feel like I don't got nothing to live for anyway. They're going to try to take me out anyway. The crowd became more angered, even someone firing shots. No one was hurt. Meanwhile, Brown's body laid in the street for hours. Ferguson Police Chief Tom Jackson says the St. Louis County Police Department is handling the investigation into the officer shooting and says as standard procedure, the officer has been put on paid administrative leave. We do want this investigated fully, and that's why we asked for the outside help to do that. Leg hurt him. I don't know what the hell happened, but I know he shot that child. And when he shot him, the little boy fell, and then he shot him six more times. And, you know, the police was in the car. He left. They, I guess they made him leave, you know. So you're saying the, the, the officer... The officer who in, shot him left. Yeah. So he the, left. So the officer was in the car when he... he, he was, she was in the car shooting the boy. He wasn't standing out. He was in the car. Because if he was rolling, he was driving, and he ran over his feet, how else he was going to shoot him? He is still in the car. He was in the car shooting the boy. He was in the car shooting his boy. So what did the what did the boy do anything wrong? He, they, I don't know. They say he fucking took some out of the crib. I don't care. He ain't no gun. He threw his hands up. When the police ran over his feet, the boy threw his hands up. He threw his hands up. He shot him. And the boy fell. Then he shot him some more. Okay. That's what happened. On us, y'all. They sending the dogs out. They sending the dogs out on us. Look at this. Look at this. Look at these motherfuckers, man.
Welcome back. Today was supposed to be Michael Brown's first day of college, but over the weekend he was shot and killed by a police officer. He was unarmed at the time, and protests over Michael Brown's death yesterday have now turned into looting. Uh, we now know that police made 32 arrests overnight. We also know that the police chiefs of Ferguson and St. Louis County, both, both of their departments uh, came under fire from protesters. The St. Louis Post-Dispatch reports that police helicopters were also shot at. Just take a look at that front page. Day of protests, night of frenzy. And that death threats have been made, um, I believe, against you and against the police chief. What is being done to the end of personal security uh, for the police who now seem to be coming under a lot of criticism? Well, I mean, no matter what the situation is out here, Every time a law enforcement officer walks on the street, he could be a target. So, I mean, this is nothing new for our chief, I'm sure. Well, uh, it is new. The, it is the, new. Uh, there were shots fired directly at a police helicopter. There were shots fired and two officers were hurt. This is definitely new. So, to the end of the situation that, no, that has, there's, cre there's has no been created overnight. I know of. Well, we've got one of those reports. There's we'll no, check into it for sure. But, but okay. you know, we're also sure. being told that the personal cell phones, the addresses of police officers have now been hacked. This is a different day than yesterday. You've got to admit that. They destroyed them motherfuckers. They destroyed. Hey, let me get that bottle. What are you dealing with this right now? The best that I can. Yeah. Your son, Michael, had just graduated from high school was set to start college today. Tell us about him and what kind of a young man he was. Well, you know, he was my firstborn. Sweet, loving, dedicated. He worked hard to get through high school. And we were so proud of him. Mm -hmm. And for him to start a new journey going to college, we was even more proud of him. And he was just spending the summer at his grandmother's house. Never did we think we'd be planning a funeral. We was waiting on his first day of school. Mm -hmm. And um, they robbed us of that. They you, took one of my best friends. You were close. That's my son. First child I ever had. It's hard to convey a parent's agony, especially a mother's agony, for losing a child. And I thought you, what you said was so profound about getting him to stay in school, getting him to go to college, graduate high school and go to college, which is, has been a challenge. It's difficult for many African-American boys. Why did you feel the need to say that? Because it was true. It was the truth, and I needed them to know that people may do things, and it becomes um, repetitive in a certain race. But we didn't. We don't live like that. Not our family. We feel like we can do anything, go anywhere. We're just not subject to living in the city. And like I said, just because my son is a 6'4 black male walking down a city street does not mean he fit the profile for any, anything other than just walking down that street. Mm -hmm. That's all he was doing. You said he that... Did nothing wrong. You said that it was, he was your best friend. My mother is my best friend. And what she would say is that you shouldn't go before I should go. Your son should not die before you die. I sadly have to say that. Yeah. You okay, Leslie? I'm going to be okay, you know. I'm going to be okay. But right now, I'm not. I'm not okay. Michael. You heard Leslie say it was her best friend, and and you. How are you dealing with this? I 
It's hard. He was my best friend too. It's hard. Not seeing him. Not talking to him on the phone. Him cracking jokes. Him just playing around being him, you know. Cause I, I understood him, you know. He was just a, you know, a, a bond we had, you know. I'm gonna miss all this, but I got memories in my head that will never go away. Good times. Your shirt. Get through it. Your shirt says no justice. But as soon as that, why why are you wearing the shirt? No. Because my son don't have justice, and we don't have no peace. If he has no justice, we won't get no peace. Yelling, we are peaceful, hands up, don't shoot. Here comes the St. Louis County Police Department, continuing to advance their line. We have now pulled back a city block and a half. There it goes, they are now firing onto the crowd. Out! Shit! They are firing rubber bullets. They will firing. They are firing rubber bullets and smoke grenades. There is the... Now they are firing them into the neighborhoods, into the back of people's houses. We will continue to record this. Wait, wait, me on the right. We've got news channels for running. They're attacking reporters. They are attacking civilians. They are firing upon the media. They are continuing to advance down the street. Hey, D! Hey, D. Let's go! Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my shit! This is my shit! You know what it is. This is my shit! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. No, fuck that shit! Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This is my shit! I'm getting out of here. This is my backyard. This is my backyard. This is our home. This is my shit. This is our residence. Y'all got to fuck on. Why they just shoot Why you think people say fuck the police? Why you think people say fuck the police? This is a fuck on. This shit. Yeah. Protests are continuing in Ferguson, Missouri, over the death of Michael Brown, an unarmed African-American teenager who was shot by police on Saturday. But the mood in the town has changed drastically over the past 24 hours. On Wednesday night, Ferguson looked like a war zone as police fired tear gas, stun grenades and smoke bombs. Uh, the police arrested at least 10 people, including a St. Louis alderman and two journalists. But last night, the mood was less tense after Missouri's Governor Jane Nixon put an African-American highway patrol captain named Ron Johnson in charge of security in the town. Uh, Johnson marched with protesters and ordered the riot gear put away. I grew up here, and this is currently my community and my home. And therefore, it means a lot to me personally that we break this cycle of violence, diffuse attention, and build trust, showing the utmost respect for every interaction with every citizen. And, we're, and when we talk about boots on the ground, my boots are going to be on the ground. And actually, I plan on the night myself walking to the quick trip that has been uh, called Ground Zero in meeting with the folks there myself tonight. The events in Ferguson over the past week have sparked a national debate over racial profiling and the militarization of local police forces. On Thursday, President Obama addressed the situation in Ferguson, but made no mention of race in his remarks. There is never an excuse for violence against police or for those who would use this tragedy as a cover for vandalism or looting. There's also no excuse for police to use excessive force against peaceful protests or to throw protesters in jail for lawfully exercising their First Amendment rights. 
And here in the United States of America, police should not be bullying or arresting journalists who are just trying to do their jobs and report to the American people on what they see on the ground. In a statement, Attorney General Eric Holder said, quote, I'm deeply concerned that the deployment of military equipment and vehicles sends a conflicting message. What Holder didn't mention was the federal government's role in supplying local police forces with military-grade equipment. The New York Times reports Department of Homeland Security grant money paid for the $360,000 Beer Cat armored truck on patrol in Ferguson. Most of the body armor worn by officers responding to the Ferguson protests was also paid for with federal money. Residents of Ferguson are still demanding answers about why police shot Michael Brown, the unarmed teenager, and why the police department has taken so long to release the name of the officer involved. We don't want no private meetings going on. We're not here to talk about But we're here to talk about what can happen to us as black people around the world. We want the world to know we're being done. We're asking for 100,000 people to come into the city of St. Louis to help us with the racism that they're doing. They are dogging us as black people. That's right. They are shooting us down the street like dogs, like animals. Right. They're shooting our babies. They're killing us for no reason other than we black. Our problem is not in Afghanistan. Make sure y'all step into the because they're not going to come on us. Our problem is not in Afghanistan. Our no, problem is not in here. Israel. That's our problem ain't with Islam and Jihad. Our problem is in America with these racist white folks right here in America. To begin first with Patricia Bynes, what has changed uh, since uh, in the last 24 hours in Ferguson? Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, the change has been incredible. It feels like there's been a military occupation lifted off of the area. Uh, it's just been a complete change in, 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 in spirit. The same people who were out protesting and who uh, were out, have been out in the streets, were out. It was like a party last night. Everyone was relaxed, smiling, happy. Um, for, the, for the most part, you know, there, there weren't too many issues. It was just amazing, and it happened in the same place where we were running from tear gas and trying to dodge rubber bullets and, and smoke bombs the exact night before. Reverend Renita Brown, you were hit by a rubber bullet. When did that happen, and can you describe the situation? Um, it was Wednesday night, and um, the, the police told us to disperse or, you know, whatever would happen. And, um, and then the rubber bullets came after the tear gas. And Reverend Brown, why did you feel that you had to be out there with the crowd that night? And, uh, and were, what was your reaction to this uh, extreme crackdown uh, by uh, police basically in military gear? Um, you have to be out there because that's where the people are. You have to be where the people are. And um, I, I thought that that type of military type of policing is really, it's, it's too much. It, it incited people. You know, when Reverend it was Brown, just the... When, you, when we hear that rubber bullets, among other things, are used, some people might think, well, they're rubber bullets, they're not live. Explain exactly the impact this rubber bullet had on you. Well, left a pretty good red mark and a pretty nasty bruise, and it, and it stings, and it's not comfortable. Uh, and I am very glad that President Obama did come out and say something, because I think the images that the country saw, or even the world saw, about what was going on here uh, in the St. Louis area were disturbing and could not be ignored anymore. It, this was just the physical manifestation of the hostility between uh, the community at large, and it seems like the, the policing. It's not just a Ferguson uh, incident, but just the issue of police harassment and police brutality and police tactics used on this community. That's what you saw the physical manifestation of. Uh, We've got Jakari Jackson is going to be joining us. I think, do we have him ready right now, guys? Okay. Let's go to Jakari. I want to get an update as to what's going on there and um, find out how things have changed because we've heard that there's been some uh, changes, not only in the fact that the police have been relieved of direct duty, essentially, putting the highway patrol, the governor's put the highway patrol in charge of that. We've also heard reports that perhaps the FBI may be put in charge of the investigation. Jakari, what's going on there now? Well, this is Jakari Jackson for InfoWars.com reporting from Ferguson, Missouri. Let's take a quick look because this has been going on for the past couple of hours. This is a conservative 2,000 people you can't really see. Uh, hey, look, let's see. What, do you have something you want to say, miss? Yes, I do. 
I think we all should come together regardless of our color. This is not just about Mike Brown, it's about other people across the nation getting murdered. I just watched a man get choked out over an altercation, and that was very disturbing to see, but our police should protect and serve, not murder and disturb. They're here to protect us, and they never do, seldom do, and I don't meet really nice cops in St. Louis, but I've been harassed before and almost slammed on the ground by a man for no reason. They had no no description of the person. They said it was me, that's her, that's her, finna take me to jail, and I think we should all just Watch out we should uh, we should watch out for each other. Now I don't know. Were you here last night? Okay. Now I would say that you you were here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. Everybody, let's let's get. Okay. So what do you think about the police response? Yeah. What do you think about the police response last night compared to today? It was absolutely ridiculous today is different they're mixed in with the crowd um last night they were in tactical i mean they even had on these masks these black masks some of them were in plain clothes the roof, the and they would jump into the crowd with no and then tags. with no, no name tags. tags they would not identify themselves then they would go back up behind the regular cops and i got pictures and raw footage to prove oh, oh I, I do too hey <laughs> that the people we're having a peaceful protest. The young yeah. people were not out here clowning. I came out here yeah. purposely at night. What, what happened with that lie that they told, saying that um people were throwing bottles and yeah. rocks and all that? Here's the people. Here's the police. The media's right here. That's this room. Everybody can see. Where are the bottles and the rocks? Where's that happening? Now, one person did throw a bottle. It went over my head and yeah. busted right in front of me when I was sitting there in front of the uh, the tactical vehicle on the left. I was sitting down uh, underground. But I will tell you, I will tell you though, the the one bottle they had seventy plus guys in heavy armor. They could have caught that one guy if they wanted right. to. Right. Yeah. It's a it's a lot. It's a big change from every night from tonight, because every night since Sunday, man, the police it was a heavy presence, right. you know. And uh, tonight, it, it, the cops are non-existent and it's still no violence. That's all That's we wanted, man. Well, just just to hear our voice. We didn't need all it. I mean, but they scattered. But when we was out here before. They snipers, they got right. the beams on us and everything. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And we, and it, it, it makes it makes big tension. You know what I'm saying? So you can't tell us and to go laughing, nowhere. When you're, yeah. when you're laughing at you, when you're talking about Mike and how he was executed or murdered or however people right. want to look at it, and we're talking about it, and people are on the loudspeaker expressing themselves, and you're sitting there hitting your baton and laughing at them and well, yeah, taunting them. That's we saw him, Joe Biggs. Joe Biggs, show him uh, the story about the guy who was laughing and giggling. The far left side where the uh, right vehicle was, and the cop had the baton, and he kept doing this. And he had this sick, like, smile on his face. And he just kept looking, and people were walking up and say, hey, you need to act professional. You're here to do a job to protect right. and serve, not intimidate people. Stop pointing guns at people right. and yeah. get that. Stop the intimidation. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this. I'll, I'll let you talk in one second. But let me ask you guys this. What do you think about the response from the black leaders? What do you think about President Obama's response to this? Excellent. Excellent. I, I like the fact that he did something behind the scenes before he even spoke. What did he know? do behind the scenes? Well, he got the U.S. Uh, Department of Justice involved, U.S. District Attorney. He did all that before he even spoke. What about it? What about Al Sharpton yeah. I got an issue with. Don't tell me about it. What do you got an issue with Al Sharpton? Al Sharpton came in town, got in front of the cameras, picked up a, a microphone, <laughs> said his thing in front of the cameras, then left us, went to the uh, Wiz Khalifa Young Jeezy concert. Took pictures. Is that true? Now, yeah, took pictures he, he, with him uh, and Amber Rose, man. You tell, you tell me Al Sharpton was hanging out with I Young Jeezy. on Instagram. <laughs> he, he did not meet with none of the folks. I mean... It took a while for them to come in, though. You know what I'm saying? We've been out here every night. But that's what all this is for, man. It took a while for them to get out here. We've been out here every night. Obama, what right. took you so long? This is a crisis out here, man. This is a crisis. And it about Al Sharpton. Come on, man. Can we trust a, a, a government informant? Can we? And it take me back to the, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. And to have a city that a majority are African American and only three African American are on the police force. Or to have local police officers referring to the protesters as animals. Or to have people dress in military garment and pointing rifles directly at the protesters. That is only going to excite people. So my own feeling is right now is that President Obama should use the authority of his office uh, to declare martial law, federalize the Missouri National Guard to protect people as they protest, 
and people should come together. Reasonable, elected officials, community leaders, and address what is happening there. If we fail to act, the fires of frustration and discontent will continue to burn, not only in federal Missouri, but all across America. As someone who's both African American and in law enforcement, does that put you in a position to understand each side more better or, or does it make it more difficult in a way when police and the African American community are, are at such loggerheads? Well, I think because this is my community, I don't, you know, the thing that I am first is a man. The black man and who I am is, is, is down the chain, but I'm a man first. And so I take the approach from a man's standpoint and uh, a young man lost his life. And, uh, and so I grieve for that family because I have a son. And so we're, we're, we're going to look at this from a um, personal standpoint. And if that was my son or that was my friend, uh, how would I feel and what my emotions would be? And whatever my voice was, I want to have the right to say what that voice is. And that's what we're going to do here today and every day forward. All the militarized images. What, what was your reaction when you saw those images on television? You know, last night I did not get a chance to look at the news, and, and that's honest. Uh, I did look at it today, and I stepped step back. And, you know, when you step back and you can look at something in a different environment, and, uh, and we decide we, we do need to do something different, and we're doing that. And, uh, and we are going to do that. And it's sometimes you just have to uh, not just let, spe let people speak, but you have to listen. And so, like I used to tell my kids that they were small, open up your listening ears. And so now I have mine on. interrupting your programming this morning to cover the breaking news out of Ferguson and what you're looking at here in the middle of your screen right behind the individual with the red hat that is police chief Tom Jackson he is set to start a news conference at the charred quick trip there in Ferguson and what we're expecting him to do is to release the name of the Ferguson police officer who shot and killed 18 year old Mike Brown last well, Saturday time, so we now listen right. to his press conference First of all, thanks for everybody for uh, for coming out. Welcome. Sorry about being late. I know that the uh, timeline hasn't really played out like I expected it would. But um, as some of you are aware, I've had a lot of sunshine requests, sunshine law requests for information and documents about a variety of things, some of which is not available to me. Um, 
But anyway, so I'm here to talk about uh, two things. Uh, first of all, the name of the officer involved in the shooting, and then I've had a lot of Sunshine requests for information. I'm going to be releasing information about a robbery that occurred on August 9th, immediately preceding the uh, altercation and shooting death of Michael Brown. Um, it's important to note that I, uh, I have made contact with someone who is in contact with Officers Brown's family um, to make them aware of this uh, information being released. Uh, let's see. At 12.01 p.m., uh, our officer encountered Michael Brown on Canfield Drive. At 12.04, a second officer arrived on the scene immediately following the shooting. And at 12.05, a supervisor was dispatched, dispatched to the scene, and subsequent officers arrived. There has been some questions about uh, the calling of an ambulance. The ambulance that was at the sick case on Glen Arc uh, was uh, coming by immediately following the shooting, and they did respond to, uh, to uh, assess Michael Brown. Uh, so we're, um, I'm going to have uh, some police officers going to be handing out packets that have all the information that was requested and the sunshine request concerning the robbery. Um, we're going to give those uh, packets, first of all, to uh, um, those agencies that have made the sunshine request, and then anybody else who wants them. I think we have enough to give out. Um, we've, we've got quite a few. Um, I'm sorry. The officer that was involved in the shooting of uh, Michael Brown was Darren Wilson. He's been a police officer for six years, has had no, uh, no disciplinary action taken against him. He was treated for injuries, which occurred on Saturday. Again, I won't be taking any questions at this time, but the packets will be handed out by my officers. And uh, the, the name is uh, Darren, D-A-R-R-E-N Wilson, W-I-L-S-O-N. And, uh, Thank you, and I'll see you again this afternoon. All right, there you just hearing. First I'm David Knight with Leanne McAdoo on this Thursday, August 14th, 2014. Here are our top stories. Tonight, shocking video from the front lines of the Infowar as Ferguson police deliberately target journalists. The truth about the Ferguson riots and martial law. Because the police state isn't coming, it's already here. We're going to be joining our reporters who are live on the scene in Ferguson, Missouri tonight. But first, we want to break down for you what's been happening this last week. Now, as Paul Joseph Watson pointed out in his story today on Infowars.com, he said Ferguson police were essentially AWOL back on Sunday when we had the looting, yet last night they were out in force to crush the First Amendment and to arrest journalists. With authorities attempting to enforce an arbitrary nighttime ban on protests and peaceful demonstrators, they were telling everyone last night, first you can come into one area, now you've got to move to another area. You've got to leave right away, and if you don't, that essentially gives them a pretest to arrest you or they can gas you or they can shoot you with rubber bullets. All of those things were happening last night to journalists, not just to peaceful demonstrators. Now, the journalists who were arrested were the Washington Post's Wesley Lowry and the Huffington Post's Ryan Riley. They were arrested, says uh, the Washington Post reporter. He said he, it was an illegal assault on the freedom of press to cover the news. And the Huffington Post reporter said he was handcuffed as he was charging his phone at a local McDonald's. He said the cops arrested him because he was photographing them, which, of course, is legal. There is no expectation of privacy in a public area. There is no expectation of privacy in an area that is open to the public, in a business like McDonald's. He said he didn't pack his bag quickly enough, so they arrested him. They also got pretty rough with him, shoving them around, shoving them into the drink machine from what they said. Yes, for, when you look at the video, and let's take a look at this video <laughs> right now, it's absolutely amazing. See if this looks like they're just trying to move them to a safer area with their consent. You see them uh, getting <laughs> multiple tear gas canisters shot at them right there. <laughs> They've got all their lights set up. I don't think that they wanted to move from that area. No, not. he <laughs> was about to go do a, a live on there. <laughs> yeah, they were. and if you look at this, you'll see Jakari Jackson right off on the right-hand side of the screen, just on the other side of that sign, running with them. Uh, now, what is interesting is what happens afterwards. Now, they're not 
taking their camera equipment, actually. They're taking down the lights. They're turning down the lights. They don't want to have lights shown on what they're doing. But you'll also see as we move along on this video here, let's uh, fast forward that up to the point where they, they come out there with the uh, MRAP or the, the military vehicle. There they are. They're taking the lights down. And then after they do this, watch this guy goes back to the camera, and he actually points the camera down. So he's leaving the most expensive piece of equipment up on the tripod, but he doesn't want it to record anything. Uh, so I don't think they were looking after them. I don't think they were helping them to move to another area so they could continue to film in another area. And they say Rand Paul got to the issue. He said, we have to demilitarize the police. This is a story from Time magazine today. He said, if I had been told to get out of the street as a teenager, there would have been a distinct possibility that I might have smarted off to the cop, but I wouldn't have expected to be shot. And that's what eyewitness accounts are saying happened there. And then we're about to go to Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, who's with Jakari Jackson, live in Ferguson, Missouri. A very different night tonight, isn't it, Joe? Roger that. It's Joe Biggs, Infowars.com, at the QT parking lot in Ferguson, Missouri. Uh, tonight's a lot more calmer. And the reason why is because we don't have a militarized force out here pointing down, you know, pointing sniper rifles at civil people out here hanging out, trying to protest, doing the right thing. Now tonight you have the cops walking around amongst the people with no weapon presence whatsoever, whatever, you know, their pieces on their side, but nothing's drawn. You yeah. know, last yesterday we didn't even get the low ready, which was with the weapon pointed down. They had the weapons up pointing at us, being very intimidating, mm -hmm. and that does nothing but cause people to get aggressive and feel uncomfortable when a weapon's pointed at them. Oh, absolutely. And they're doing that deliberately. I mean, anybody who is a professional, if they're trained in the Army, if they're trained as a policeman, they know that you don't point a gun at somebody casually. You don't do it unless you're planning on shooting them. Everybody well, understands you know, that. Well, in Iraq and Afghanistan, there we have what's called rules of engagement. Yeah. You don't shot unless shot upon. Well, we're, don't, we're not seeing the police have that same mentality. They're shooting first and then eventually ask, asking questions later. Well, I'll tell you what the difference is, Joe. The difference is is that that tonight they've had feedback from people because of people like you and Jakari and the rest of the press that are there covering this. If the press wasn't there covering this, then they would not have changed what they're doing. They probably would have been the same or even worse tonight. Yeah, you know, what I've seen in the mainstream media is how they want to portray this whole racial divide amongst people. Yes. And what I've seen today has been complete and total love amongst everyone and i saw that yesterday as well throughout the day you know when i got shot last night it was two young african-american uh men who helped me up off the ground and then showed me how to get out of here back so i can meet up with jakari and josh and then again today i saw one of them he walked up to me and he said hey are you okay you know i just i'm concerned i want to make sure you're fine but you know fox news cnn msnbc all these guys want to tell you that everyone out here is full of hate there's this huge racial divide that the blacks hate the whites, so the whites hate the black. And I don't see that at all. Everyone out here, I saw black guys, white guys, everyone holding hands and praying and saying, hey, we need to stand up for this injustice. This police brutality is going too far. It's happening. It's running rampant. And the only way we can defeat this is not with violence, but through peaceful protests, sitting down and trying to let them understand that we have concerns and we want answers. That's a very peaceful solution, officer. All right. 
A private autopsy has found Michael Brown, the black teenager killed by a police officer in Ferguson, Missouri, was shot at least six times. Brown was shot twice in the head, four times in the arm, with all bullets appearing to enter from the front. On Sunday, Attorney General Eric Holder said the Justice Department would conduct its own autopsy following uproar over local authorities' handling of the case. Missouri Governor Jay Nixon has ordered the National Guard into Ferguson today after another night of protests over Brown's death. For the past two nights, police have tried to enforce a five-hour curfew starting at midnight. On Sunday night, police fired tear gas, smoke canisters and rubber bullets in an attempt to clear the streets before the curfew began. The police fired into a crowd that included parents with their children. Police accused some protesters of throwing Molotov cocktails and trying to overrun the police command center. Earlier in the day, 1,300 police Packed uh, earlier in the day, hundreds of people packed the Greater Grace Church for a rally attended by Michael Brown's parents. Brown's cousin Ty Pruitt addressed the crowd. He was not an animal, but that's how he was killed. This was the last actions that our family member made before he put his before he went to rest this will be stuck in my family's memories for the rest of our lives Community outrage grew over the weekend after the Ferguson police named the officer who shot Brown, Darren Wilson, after withholding his identity for five days. But in naming Wilson, the police also released video footage showing a young man who appeared to be Mike Brown shoplifting a box of cigarillos from a convenience store. The Ferguson police released the video while continuing to withhold all other details about Brown's killing, including how many times he was shot and the incident report from the shooting. In disclosing the video, the police appeared to suggest Brown may have been stopped as a suspect in the shoplifting, but hours later, Ferguson police admitted the officer did not know about the incident and had stopped Brown for solely walking in the middle of the street. On Sunday, Missouri Governor Jay Nixon said he had opposed the video's release. We and our security team and the Highway Patrol did not know that was going to be released. Uh, I don't think the Attorney General knew that. Uh, and uh, quite frankly, we disagree deeply. I think for two reasons. Number one, to attempt to, in essence, uh, uh, disparage the character of, of this victim um, uh, in the middle of a process like this is, is, is not right. It's just not right. Uh, and, and secondarily, it, it did put the, uh, the community and, quite frankly, the region and the nation, um, you know, on, uh, on alert again. Uh, this is, uh, these are, these are these are old wounds. Uh, these are these are deep wounds between uh, in, in these communities, and uh, uh, that that action uh, was not helped. At least 31 people were arrested as street clashes erupted between riot police and groups of demonstrators. Police are claiming they came under heavy gunfire and that two people were shot over the course of the night, though not by police. They said Highway Patrol Captain Ron Johnson blamed what he called a small group of lawbreakers. These criminal acts came from a tiny minority of lawbreakers. But anyone who has been at these protests understands that there is a dangerous dynamic in the night. It allows a small number of violent agitators to hide in the crowd and then attempt to create chaos. The catalyst can be bottles thrown, Molotov cocktails, and of course shots fired. Protesters are peaceful and respectful. Protesters don't clash with police. At least two journalists were detained overnight, including Ryan Devereaux of The Intercept. Monday marked the first night the National Guard was deployed to the streets of Ferguson, but so far they've played a limited role protecting the police command post.